Hello and welcome to this technical demonstration of M VBRIC Plus. Hello, my name's Jason Gledhill from K Systems. I'm joined today by Richard Hunter and Patrick Aldridge. Today we are going to demonstrate the installation of our EWI system. First of all, we need to identify the substrate. Then we need to carry out a pull-out test into the substrate. That will determine the fixing type required to install the system. The next stage is to check the building for line and level. Any deviations must be corrected before the installation can commence. The next stage of the process is to prepare the substrate. First of all, we apply Algae Clean. This is a liquid spray applied product which is sprayed directly onto the surface of the wall which kills any mould growth. Secondly, we apply R7 bonding agent and this will kill any suction and allow the render to suitably adhere to the wall. The next stage is to fit the base profile. When insulation is required below DPC, XPS board may be fitted in this zone. Compriband seal tape is then fitted to the top edge of the XPS board prior to the fitting of the base profile. The base profile is fitted line and level at DPC. If no DPC exists, then the base profile is fitted at 150mm above ground level. The base profile is fixed with hammer set fixings which are installed at 300mm centres. The base profile is jointed with connector clips and cut and mitered at external corners to ensure good detailing is achieved. A clip-on bead is then finally fitted with a mesh-up stand prior to the fitting of the insulation board. We're now ready to start fitting the insulation boards. First of all, we need to fit Compraband seal tape to all the abutments. The reason why I'm installing the Compraband seal tape about four or five millimetres behind the pencil line is because when I offer up my mineral fibre and install the fixing, that will compress the mineral fibre in and should end up in line with the pencil line. Cut sections of insulation must be no less than 200 millimetres in width. The insulation boards are mechanically fixed with the specified fixings including an oversized washer. The insulation boards are aligned in a brick bond fashion. L-shaped sections of insulation are fitted around all structural openings. I've just made a small loop 20 millimetres back from the, the end of the junction in the compromise seal tape. That allows me when I make two junctions and I can press the insulation to the, to the window reveal, it will compress the junction and bind them together. Okay, so we've got the insulation fitted now. So first of all, I'm going to talk to you about the boards. These are a mineral wool board. They are A1 fire rated. They are a dual density board, which means the face is very firm and the rear of the board is soft. The way we know that is because the boards are lettered and this is done by the manufacturer to make sure they're installed. As you can see, it says this side up on the board. The boards are arranged in a brick bond fashion. As you can see, the boards are staggered and we've got a half overlap on each board. We don't want any less than 200 millimetres in overlap, but we generally go for a half board overlap, which is 600 millimetres. Around the windows, we have L-shaped sections of board. This gives us additional strength because this is a weak point in the building and it's also a wind-loaded zone because of the opening and the vortexes on the external corners. In addition to the L-shaped sections, we stagger the boards on the external corners. As you can see, they're interlocked as we build. This is because of the wind loading on the external corners and it gives additional strength. So here we have an oversized washer and a central fixing. The fixing goes through the washer and then a hole is drilled into the wall and the fixing is anchored into the building. We use an oversized washer because of the mineral wool and the nature of the material. 
The material is very soft and it can easily pull over the fixing head. So this is why we have the oversized washer to accommodate that. So now we've got all the insulation works complete, one thing we must do is protect all the surrounding interfaces, i.e. windows, soffits and anything else that is prone to being splashed by render during application. Once we have all this in situ, we're good to go. So now we're ready for the base coat. The HP14 base coat is supplied in 25 kilo bags. It's marked with a batch number and date of manufacture. The product must be used 12 months from this date and stored in dry conditions. The material is mechanically mixed with six litres of clean water for five minutes minimum. It is then left to stand for five minutes. It is then reworked and ready for application. Stage one, fit the corner beads embedded into the wet material line and level. The material is applied at four to six millimetres thick. The material is then serrated vertically using a notched rule or trowel. The brick nets are then embedded into the serrated base coat. The brick nets are arranged line and level with a five millimetre gap in between the splines. The material is then pulled through the mesh and fully encapsulated in the base coat no clean mesh must be visible. Once this is complete, stainless steel fixings are then installed through the system into the substrate at a rate of six fixings per square metre. The brick slip adhesive is applied in between the splines with the mortar gun. The brick slips are fixed into position onto the bottom edge of each spline. The brick slips are arranged in a stretcher bond fashion to replicate that of a standard brick pattern. A 10mm mortar joint gap is left horizontally and vertically to allow for pointing. Preformed pistol bricks are used at external corners of the building and around all openings to create a robust detail. The pointing mortar is mixed and loaded into a pointing gun. The material is then applied carefully in between each joint, ensuring each joint is completely full. For ease of application, the material is applied to the vertical joint first, then to the horizontal joint. The material must then be left until it is firm to the touch. Once the material is firm enough, then the joints can be struck with a brick jointing tool. Again, the vertical joints first, and then the horizontal joints. Once the joints have been tooled and allowed to dry, the surface of the wall can be brushed diagonally with a soft brush to remove any excess material.